Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go through the product section of your folio. Um, I'm doing this because unfortunately we're not going to get the whole thing done before I leave and I just worry that with over the holidays and in that first week of term um, you might forget some of the really key points and it might be helpful to have me there uh, in video form to explain it to you. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the product section and I'm going to go through an example and then show you how they both work together. Um, there's not much left of the folio with the product section, it's a little smaller than the photograph section, um, but hopefully doing this video will make it all very clear. All right, so the first thing is the product is actually, you know, the photographs for Instagram. It's about the post. So when we're analyzing existing examples, as it says here, um, you need to actually be analyzing the post. It's not so much about the photograph. It's about the actual post itself, the wording, the tagging, um, the language, um, maybe filters, stuff like that. Anything that is actually Instagram based, less photo based. Um, so, as it says here, find a variety of Instagram examples, but make sure they're relevant Instagram examples. So, nature, botanical gardens, Adelaide events, anything that's relevant that's going to help you with your types of wording. Because remember, our target audiences are usually, you know, people from Adelaide. So, it's important that we have um, some kind of a relevant uh, analysis of posts. Um, same as when you analyze your uh, photographs. And you don't repeat yourself I don't want you to repeat yourself here either so when you actually um, analyze things you're looking for different tags you're looking for hashtags and you're looking for different language um, and use of emoticons use of like more casual language adding hashtags into someone's sentence like all the different ways people write on Instagram but I want you to find a variety not all the same stuff what's the point in repeating yourself Remember, this point is investigation. You're meant to be looking kind of broad when it comes to your um, you know, examples that you're analyzing. So that is how you actually go about analyzing uh, the posts, the um, existing examples. Uh, yeah, basically, is it effective? Is it not? All right, the next part is promotion. So strategies of promotion on social media find articles or blogs or anything that you can find that is current and useful and really gives you some tips about promotion on Instagram because that is when it comes down to it your design brief you have to promote a business on Instagram so please make sure that whatever you find is useful is relevant and you know is going to give you some information so you can see here, it's a bit like how when we do our tutorials, you screenshot the tutorial and then you dot point the steps. Same thing here. Screenshot the website, the blog, the article, whatever you've looked at, and then dot point the key steps. Um, any key tips, advice, settings, anything like that, anything that you can find. The more technical, the better. So you can see there's one particular screenshot and the tips about you know promoting businesses on um, Instagram. Hopefully that's pretty clear. You just need one. It's just so you have some idea. As long as it's a good one. If it's a crap one, then do two. All right, so the next section is list Instagram businesses that promote others. Now, there's a whole bunch of them out there that uh, are companies on Instagram or people on Instagram that repost other people's stuff. They do it for promotion of Adelaide specifically. Um, there is a bunch of them. If you go on to um, the people that I follow through your school-based Instagram and you can actually go through and you'll notice that there's a bunch. Uh, Capture Adelaide Glam, Adelaide, Adelaide, uh, This is Radelaide. Like, there's a bunch, a bunch, a bunch. Um, so I want you to go on and have a bit of a look and see what ones you can find. Just write a list here. All you have to do is write a list. You can see an example here. Um, Tali has actually screenshotted um, the different uh, places that actually, you know, promote other businesses. So why do you need to look this up? Because these are the businesses that you want to tag. So if you're posting something to promote Adelaide, you want to tag these guys because then they might see your stuff and be like, that's amazing, and then repost. And that's more promotion, which again is the design brief, which is important. Okay, so the posting. Now, I will have a look at both examples here in regards to posting. Now, um, what you want to do is you want to be looking up, you know, how we're actually going to post this, the data requirements for posting, um, because you can't upload 
a 10 megabyte image on Instagram. It's just not going to work. It's not going to load. It's going to be stupid. So you can actually find if you look up file size requirements for Instagram, or if you look up the Instagram web page and say information or facts, you're going to find this stuff. It's going to be pretty easy to find. I put it there because I want you to find it because I think it's really useful. Um, so you can see the different types of um, uh, requirements in Ella's there. And you can see data requirements here in Talia. So you're going to find a bunch of different things. Just make sure it's current, relevant, um, you link it, you re uh, reference it. As you always do in your investigation, make sure you reference everything. Do not just put random crap in, actually have to reference it. Okay, so that's the data options, um, data requirements, sorry. The next part for posting, like when you're actually going to post something, one, you have to think about the requirements to post it in regards to size, but you also have to think about what you're going to do to it while you're posting. So Instagram has a bunch of different options, which I'm sure most of you are familiar of, mainly uh, filters. Now, this is investigation, remember. So what filter options are there? How do you actually add a filter? So these are the things that I want you to, um, to document. Now, I'm flicking between two different examples because I want you to see how it's not just done one way. There's lots of different ways that you can document this sort of stuff. So you can see here all the different filters, why filters are added, the different types of filters here, editing options that you can do, um, the hashtag stuff, Again, is a bit more down here for Ella, but same here, different filters that you can, um, you know, add, why you would add them. You might not, you shouldn't really need to add them realistically because your photos should be amazing as is. Um, Tali has actually looked up cropping options. Uh, now, Instagram used to just be square. Now, it's not so square, but cropping is something that you're going to have to consider. And remember, anything that you investigate, you can then test. So if you investigate cropping, you can test cropping. If you investigate filters, you then test filters. So it all connects up. All right, so that's the investigation part. That's it. That's done. The more information you put, the better. Um, and the more relevant and useful it is, the, um, the better that is as well. So as I mentioned, the impacts of product. Now that is a document that is going to um, be added in later. Now, as I've mentioned in class, we don't have enough time. I think it's a really important thing to learn how to write properly. And I would rather do that with you, um, you know, once I'm back. So in week four, I think, or five, um, we're actually going to do this impacts of product essay. Now, so don't include the impacts of products, all right? I don't want people emailing me going, Miss, what is this impacts of products? You haven't explained it. I know I haven't explained it because you're not doing it yet. So this here, do not put it in. We'll do it later. Okay. So planning. Let's skip those bits and we're going to plan. Okay, so planning. Planning is what you would do in your photograph section and you're going to do it in your product section. So you link back to the investigation and you make some decisions. So you say what you're going to actually do has investigated on the pages that you've investigated it on. So you can see here, Ella's got a really great example. Hashtags as investigated on page 16 and 18. For popularity, she's going to go with those ones. For tags, she's going to go with these ones. Um, features, captions, what kind of captions she's going to do, um, the location that she's going to tag, blah, 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 blah. All of that stuff, what filters is she going to use, okay, potentially, as investigated on page 18. So you're talking about the tagging, the different types of wording that you're going to use, and all of those things you've already investigated. All you're going to do now is say which ones you're going to use for your planning. Now, you can do this in many different ways. You can do what Ella's done and just sort of put it all there with great headings, or you can plan it per photo. So image one freelancing, you're going to post this type of wording and this type of tags and this type of this and this type of that, and then image two macro, and then so on and so forth. It's up to you how you want to actually plan it, pretty much. Yeah, up to you. Um, but as long as you plan, and as long as you link back to where you've investigated. Very, very important. All right, so testing. Testing modification validation. Now, you'll notice here that it doesn't actually say to do the planning of your um, wording and so on and so forth, but it does sort of say that here, decisions from investigation in the same order. 
So you can see that we talked about in that order and they've put it in that order. So it's not as specific and dot pointy as the rest, but it's still there. Now, the testing modification validation, very important. Um, so again, these are the things that you are testing from your investigation, the things that you've planned for, and now you're gonna test to see how they're going to work. Now, I don't want you to upload any of this testing to Instagram, okay? You load it onto Instagram, test things like filters and cropping and so on, but do not post it, all right? You are not posting anything on Instagram until next term. Um, so it's a good place though to be able to test things, which is why I've got you to set it up early. Now you can see testing filters as investigated on page 18 and 20. She's tested a bunch of filters and she's analyzed what works and what doesn't. So she's tested filters, she's modified the type of filter, and then she's validated which one's better and why. The basic principles of testing modification validation. Um, she has tested tagging and captions and hashtags and so on and so forth. All right, so filters as investigated on page 20. So you can see she's got her original photo and then she's um, tested and then she's analyzed, she's validated which one's better. Same thing with all of those. Um, then she's gone into wording and tagging. So she's actually experimented with three different types of wording, which is excellent um, because, I mean, it's like a draft. How do you know what you want to say? You test it. And then she's actually also done cropping as well. Now she's done this for a variety of images. Um, again, how much you want to put in is up to you. Um, one of each is, you know, the basic level. So, you know, three different types of testing is good. One for each type of image is helpful. Depends on how you want to lay it out, how much work you want to put in. Um, but you can see here different types of cropping and, and what that does for the image and validating. So at this point, you will have finished, um, you would have put in the contents page, the design brief, your uh, photograph section with your investigation and planning your product section with your investigation and planning, and now you've got your evaluation which sums up the whole thing. Um, now, you can see over here that you need to um, evaluate the product success against the design brief. So because of the design brief, you've been doing this assignment, so how well did you do? And modification, reflections, problem solving, what you changed, what you could change, what you would do differently, all of that stuff. Um, so the first paragraph, you really want to link back to the design brief. So how do your photographs and your posts, now you haven't actually done this yet. People get very confused in the evaluation because technically you haven't posted your photos. You haven't finished your image. You haven't finished your major product, which is the photos and the post. Um, it's like this across year 11 and year 12. Your photographs, your um, post that you're planning for is good enough to evaluate. And you're evaluating the process as well. So how well did your folio go? All of these things come together to create your evaluation. Um, so you can see here in Talia, she said, the end photographs highlight the overall design brief by promoting the botanical gardens to a younger audience. So, you know, look at the design brief, see which things you actually address and how they actually capture things and so on. Um, she has explained about the um, process of investigation and how the actual folio helped her final outcome. Um, what she would change, so she talked about how she would plan a bit better before she went and to achieve a better outcome this is what she would do. So that's a really great evaluation which covers all of the criteria. Um, if we look at Ella's, um, how her folio has developed through time, the final images reflect the design brief, she's linked to the design brief, and then she sums up the things that she's done well in the design brief. So promoting social media, um, natural and architectural forms, blah, blah, blah. Putting hashtags and filters. This is a really good evaluation for those two uh, categories. So first paragraph should be about uh, how you went with the actual process of the folio and how you address the design brief. So by summing up the design brief and saying how well you went. And then what did you do? Um, what would you have done differently? So this evaluation has those two sections um, and I really want you to try to address um, both criteria in depth. Now you have a reference list at the end which is full Harvard referencing. I will put some references on um, some resources on Daymap uh, for you in case you need a little bit of help with Harvard referencing but always good to do um, that properly because you're going to need to do that in every subject. 
Okay, so that is the rest of your folio. The folio is due in its entirety on Friday of week one. You're going to upload this to the submissions drive and um, I can check that. I will be checking that from Norway to make sure you've all uploaded. Um, and then you're going to start on the major product. There'll be a separate video for that and I hope that it'll be relatively straightforward. Um, all right, as always, any questions, queries, concerns, please don't hesitate to ask and um, yeah, good luck with it. All right, thanks guys. Bye.